Anyways, today I'm gonna show you how to use Kurataki Clean Color Real Brush water-based markers to make a super cute illustration like this. So keep on watching. Today we are going to do a Zig Clean Color Real Brush tutorial with this super cute illustration I drew of Usagi while I was out of town for Anime Expo in beautiful sunny LA. This was drawn with Color Eno pink leads. You can find a link to where you can get your own in my description below. And I've already gone ahead and swatched my colors and I'm going to be using my Ink Essentials craft sheet as a bit of a palette. Now one of my intrepid commenters commented that they find that these blend better when you use water and I have covered that in other videos. Um, so I'm going to do a mixture of techniques today, both water and direct application, since I don't have exactly the colors I need, but I have close. So we're going to start with the colors that I need to water down a bit, i.e. her hair and probably something for the background. So we're going to begin with bright yellow, which is so bright that it's just about an orange, and we're going to apply it to our craft sheet. If you have scrap uh, plastic laying around, that is perfect for this, or um, a glass top desk would also be good. Just anything non-porous. So we're just going to go ahead mix some water and we're using a water brush here and apply that first layer of color to her hair because bright orange is so bright we really can't do justice to Usagi's hair with that. And what's neat about these markers or rather uh, these leads that I'm using is that they are slightly water reactive which means we're gonna get a pink cast, which is, you know, uh, I like it. I think it kind of ties the whole thing together and it looks really cute. And these color Eno LEDs are available in eight colors, I believe. Um, and I have talked about them a few times on this channel and I'm a really big fan of these colored LEDs. I've been using the soft blue for years in my comic art. They are fun, fun colors, they're versatile, they're very erasable. They are for use in mechanical pencils. I know some of you guys are not mechanical pencil people, but I really hope you'll give these leads a shot. I think they're worth, um, sort of, just worth experimenting with, worth changing your, your, your usual routine to take a look at them. And who knows, you might discover something that changes how you make art. They certainly were a game changer for me. And while uh, I know a lot of other artists say that the tools do not make the artist, I do believe in game changing art supplies and that's why I run netosuit.blogspot.com and that's why I've done so many reviews over the years is that so many art supplies, so many art tools have um, influenced my work, helped me broaden my horizons, helped me make better work. I wanna help other artists find those tools themselves and I think it's a little bit disingenuous to claim that tools don't make that much of a difference or the old BS line that you know a great artist can make the best of terrible tools because while that's true not all of us are great artists and some of us just want to make a cute piece of art. So I am actually going to go grab a bulldog clip and I'm going to let this dry since I just applied a bunch of water to the paper. All right, guys, my watercolor has had a chance to dry. Now, the problem with doing this as a watercolor-esque application is that it's really tempting to overwork it in very thin layers. So I'm only going to do her hair. I only plan on doing her hair like this. And I only plan on doing her hair like this in a couple of layers before I just go ahead and use it directly from the brush. Now, while a watercolor technique is totally an acceptable way to do this and this is world watercolor month so it might be something you want to experiment very inexpensive way to get a nice watercolor effect um it's not really the focus of this particular video so while i am demonstrating this effect and i have used this technique many times before i am going to try to progress away from it because it can be a bit of a crutch for me and i end up never developing colors as deep as I would like. Now I may end up using it on her skin as well because I just don't have that many skin colors in the Kuratake uh, Zig Clean Color Real Brush line. 
and you may find that building up color that way is a good way to help bridge the gap for skin, skin tones and skin tone development for yourself. So I need a little more. And I will zoom in in a little bit. I just wanted you guys to be able to see the technique that I'm using here in case it is a new technique for you. And this is a technique that is honestly applicable with most water-based markers. You can even do this with um, the Super Tip water uh, Crayola markers. I have a tutorial on how to do that at natosoup.blogspot.com. And I will link that tutorial here in the description. That is a perfect way if you're really, really on a budget or perhaps uh, you have limited access to art supplies. That is a perfect way to sort of stretch what you do have. So again, I'm gonna let this dry fully. All right guys, so that has had a chance to dry. I've cleaned my water brush, but I will probably need to refill it before I start doing her skin. So I'll do that right now. Got a water brush full of water. So what I wanna do with this is I do want to embrace the whites of the paper. Now I have a problem where I often over color. So I'll basically color by numbers, fill in an area first, which you know, it has its place. It definitely has a more American art aesthetic, but I really wanna embrace sort of a light playful look. So I want to try and leave some of the white of the paper prominent and visible. So I am, I just applied and I'll read the skin tone out to you guys in a moment, but I just applied some skin tone to my Ink Essentials craft sheet, craft matto, one of the two. And um, I'm going to link those in the description because I use the heck out of it. So uh, it's one of those products that's aimed at crafters, but I think artists really could benefit from it. And you guys, I'm gonna zoom in so you guys can actually see. It's hard to see the skin color because it is so light. You guys probably can't see it at all on camera. However, I am also activating that pink, the pink in the, um, the lead, which is what I want it to do. So I'm going to let that dry and I'm also going to wipe up that water. And the color I used as promised is huh, flesh color. And if you've watched my Copic marker videos, you guys know that I'm not a fan of those sort of naming schemes. So eggshell white might be a better name for that than flesh color because flesh comes in lots of beautiful colors. So we're gonna let this dry and I'll be right back. All right guys, so that has had a chance to dry. Now I wanna go in with a direct application. I'm gonna go ahead and remove the bulldog clip because it is not necessary. And although this is a, oh, and you wanna make sure your hands are completely dry. I recently washed my hands, and for some reason I always have the hardest time getting all the water off my hands. Um, so they are not, unfortunately, completely dry. So that's something you wanna be better at than I am. Please learn from my mistakes. Anyway, we're going in now directly with that flesh color, which is literally called flesh color. And we are darkening up the shaded area, so where there would be a cast shadow. And if you find the line too harsh, you can often, not always, but sometimes you can go back in and blend out with that water base or that uh, water brush, sorry, water base, water brush but you're gonna lose some of that line, which is some of like the cell shaded watercolor aesthetic that we're kind of going for today. I am gonna do a little bit of blending now because I am getting a little harsher line than I would like. So I'm gonna go ahead, apply my color. Then I'm gonna go in with that water brush. I'm gonna Blend out a little bit. Blend out a little bit. It will probably cause blowback or bloom back where the color 
the water pushes the color back in kind of an uncontrolled fashion, which is unfortunate, but a fact of working in this medium in this way. And we're going to go ahead and do her arms in a similar fashion. And we need to let the water dry. So if you want your colors to blend, but not necessarily to layer, then you wanna give it time, you wanna work wet into wet. If you wanna give your colors time to layer and build up an intensity, then you need to give them time to dry. Water-based markers do not really handle like alcohol-based markers. So that's something that if you're gonna use both, you should sort of um, make peace with. Now, that feels mostly dry, it's not overly wet. So I'm gonna go ahead and continue working semi-wet into wet. I was afraid my paper would just be like sopping wet, which would make it unworkable in this regard. Then, it's hot in here. Then we're going to go into her cheeks and her lips with tea rose. And this is one where we really don't want to blend it with water. Like I said, I know some of you guys are like, oh, you can get better blends if you use water. You really don't want to do that with this. If you're going to blend, you want to use the previous color because water will do that blowback thing and it'll just not look very good. I mean, maybe if you're really going for a fake watercolor technique, in that case, just maybe use watercolor. So see here on her cheeks, I'm just putting down a basis of color, which I'm going to blend out with the previous color because I don't want such a harsh transition with the peach. Do that over here as well. Now something else you could do is you could put your color, your first color, like your pinker color down on your craft mat or your plastic palette, and then pick some of that color up with your second color. That's also a good method for blending these sort of things. So I'm putting some pink under her neck where skin crosses skin. It's usually a good idea to do that. Um, just makes for like a cuter, fresher look. And we're gonna go into her ears and do the same thing. We're also going to do another layer of pink with pink flamingo, and we're gonna blend that out with tea rose, not with water. A little under her nose. Oh, and blend that out with flesh color. And it's gonna start to build up a bit of an orangey cast if we do too many layers. So, I'm gonna try and be careful and not build up too many of those said layers. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to take some of this very pale blue shadow mauve. It's really not a mauve color mauve, it's more of a purple. Um, it's really more like um, a, just like a neutral tint or a light blue. We're gonna use our water brush. We wanna be careful not to cause low back, we're gonna start the shadow on her eyes. So we're gonna pick up some of that color, dab out some of the excess water, cause that's what causes blowback. And we're going to paint a layer on top of her eyes, just like that. You can barely even see it. I'm gonna let that dry, we're gonna go into it again. Clean that up. And we're gonna step away from this for a moment, but she is already looking mighty cute. All right, guys, so since that's had a chance to dry, I'm going to go back in now very carefully. I'm gonna do the tops of her eyes like this, and then I'm gonna use the water brush, and we're gonna, oh, now there's some skin tone on it, get. We're gonna, we're gonna blend that out a little bit, and I don't mind if it has sort of um an organic texture to it that is totally a-okay with me. Now, I just remembered I need to, no, I wanna go with hot pink with her. But we're going to start now by working on her jean jacket. And uh, if you guys haven't watched my videos, I basically just based her jean jacket off my jean jacket, but I love my jacket, so I wanted 
to draw her in it. And she is, to me, in my opinion, such a precious cutie muffin. So I wanted it to be sort of a sweet jacket. I think you guys can actually see what I'm doing. So I'm going to keep the camera where it is. And this is just the base color because I actually have a darker gray for the jacket. But in case you guys um, aren't familiar with like light denim jackets or jean jackets in general, areas that tend to be rolled up like so you see this is the rolled up area it's a couple shades lighter than the rest of the jacket <laughs> i'm actually i'm wearing the jacket while talking to you guys of course i am you see it in a lot of vlogs as well so you know so i'm going to give her jacket sort of an all over color Looking cute, Usagi. And we're gonna do even wanna let that dry. Yes. Sorry. I I talk to myself a lot when I make art, and I think you guys should talk to yourselves when you make art, but maybe don't do it in a public place. But it's totally okay to like chat with yourself. And I'm going to use blush, which is not even a blush color, it's more of like a freckle or a tan color for Caucasian skin. Um, I'm going to use this to start putting in some of the shadows. And I'm going to try to link everything I used in my description. And just a heads up, if you enjoy my content and you don't have a lot of money to spare, but you're looking to acquire more art supplies, um, the Amazon affiliate links, I see a little bit of money from that. So it helps me out a lot if you choose to go through that. Um, but I don't use Amazon affiliate links when it is um, much more expensive than you could get it elsewhere. That's when I will use like this Dick Blick. Or if it's only sold through, um, say, another company, then I will include that. So. And I am excited because she's turning out super cute. And I actually drew this because it was her birthday a few days ago. And I was like, oh, I want to draw an Usagi fan art. She's such a cutie. Let's see now. What next? So instead of red for her choker, I actually want to do hot pink. Because I love drawing her in casual wear with hot pink. And we're actually going to leave part of the choker uncolored and then we're gonna go in with oh so what I just used was pink and uh, now I'm gonna use peach pink to blend that out a little and then I'm gonna use peach pink to color in her bows and I'm going to leave a big highlight because these are satin and satin reflects light like whoa. So I'm gonna make sure I leave plenty of highlight. And what's great about these over say other water-based markers is that real brush tip, you can get like, you can really pull some nice detail with it. And fun to use. It took me a really long time to appreciate them. It took working on watercolor, like cheap watercolor paper. In fact, this is my Mossery sketchbook, and you guys can check out my review for that, where I throw everything at it to see what sticks. So I'm going to let those dry. And next stop is I want to start working on these roses. And I also need to pull up some reference. What we want to do is we want to leave lots of white. We want this to have an airy sort of feeling. And I found that when I color everything in, like I'm doing a color by number, it tends to get really heavy and unfun and not cute. So we don't want to do that. I'm letting the brush do a lot of the work. I'm trying to be loose. 
but I'm also trying to keep that white highlight towards the top of the rose and the tops of the petals. Oh, she's so cute. Um, and I kind of want, I'm going to regret doing this. Maybe I should just leave the background as is. I always, I always meddle. I always go too far. Um, and then I regret. So what I'm going to do instead, I was thinking about doing a background, but I'm not going to. So I always go too far. We're going to go over and start working on her patch. that dry. Now we're going to go in and do her eyes. So what I want to do is I want to use that light blue color. I'm actually going to go back into this later with um, a Signo and add white highlights and stuff. So that was Shadow Mob. Now we're going to go in with Cornflower. While it's still wet, hopefully. Yeah, we're just gonna let nature sort of take its course and clean that up after, if it needs to be straightened up at all, it might not. So next we're gonna go back in, and another layer on her choker. Sometimes with these really hot pinks, they don't layer very well. And then we're gonna add another layer using pink on top of peach pink to her hair bows and saggy is not necessarily my favorite sailor scout i like her a lot but uh jupiter and venus so for me it was lita and mina in the 90s on uh, american television but it's minako and makoto if you're like a purist and I'm sure some of you guys are like serious business. It's Minako and Makoto, don't you even? So, um, those are my favorites. And I want to do another layer with that shadow mauve on her jean jacket. I'm also mm -hmm, thinking about blending that out, but I think I'll leave it alone. So instead, we're going to start darkening up the cuffs. And then I want to do, um, hmm. Oh, I need to grab a red because Luna's eyes are, oh, maybe I could start it with a pink and then take it to a red. And this might actually work really well for shading that hot pink as well. So we've got Carmine Red. Oh wait, we want to do that blue, right? That's right. So I'm going to apply that to the mat. Clean out our brush. You always want to start with a clean brush just to be safe. I'm going to... There we go. And then we need to let that dry and we're going to clean off the mat. It's really just better to, if you can, to start with things clean and clean them as you go, lest you run into like a really bad color mix by accident. And we're gonna use dark pink, add a little bit of shadow to her choker, to her hair ribbons. Then we're gonna go into those roses with that peach pink which might not even be a very good color for that. You know what we can do though? We can use that lighter pink. Blend that one out so it's less noticeable. Add just another layer on this. It's not really the biggest deal if the roses are not super detailed. I don't have a huge collection of these. You don't actually even need a huge collection of these in order to do some really pretty things. Um, so I just have to sort of layer and make it work, which is fine. And I know some of you who have used, say, Crayola Super Tips on, say, cartridge or printer paper have note or sketchbook paper 
have noticed that um, Crayola Super Tips will tear up your paper if you try to layer. There's a couple of things you can do about that. That's, a, that's just common for water-based markers. One, it's um, the wetness of the paper makes it more delicate, which means the scrubbing from your um, words, the scrubbing from your uh, your super tip will tear it up. It'll abrade your paper. So um, an individually bristled brush like these will not tear up your paper in general. Um, it will if you just keep going over the same area over and over again. On a watercolor paper, though, it's much more able, or even just a heavier textured paper like this, it's much less likely to tear up your paper. Next, if you don't do a lot of wet into wet application, if you give things time to dry, um, you're going to have a much better result. And these brush tips are also really cool because you can get into really fine areas like we're doing here. That I find I can't do with a bullet point. Bullet point tends to put down like um, a one millimeter line regardless of how gentle I'm being. So if you guys have seen me rail against bullet points, it's because I can't really use them for detail. And some people can. Unfortunately, it's just not me. If you see me touching the paper surface, that's to see if it's dry. I do that with watercolor as well. I'm going back in with corn flour. It might bleed a little bit. Okay, so I think Luna's eyes are dry. We're gonna do the interiors of those. I think I'm gonna let that dry and I'm gonna go ahead and do our cute little crescent. That's something that would be easier to do in post, but that's not really something we have a whole lot of option for. And then I have these bubbles. So there's a few ways we can handle those. Um, so bubbles are often transparent. So uh, where they overlap, we can add some of that color. Now we're with the yellow over her hair, we want to be careful with that because we don't want to directly apply it. It's going to be too intense because being seen through a bubble would mute it. So we want to do just like a little bit like that and then let it dry and clean that up. And then we've got some bubbles down here that aren't really on top of anything at all. So what I'm going to do with those, is I'm just gonna do a little bit of this English lavender color. Then I'm gonna use a clean, so I'm scrubbing it out on a paper towel right now, clean water brush to sort of soften and blend that. Give those a chance to dry. So it's coming along, it's looking really cute. But we're at a stage where we need to step away for a little while and give it a chance. Well, hmm, I can maybe finish up on her patch. So I want that cornflower blue, same color as is in her eyes. Yellow. I'm gonna need to grab a green. And then at the top it looks like it's the carmine red. I do have a green that will work. Like I said, my collection of these is sort of limited. It's a bit more blue green than I wanted, but it's fine. And then I need to go in and darken that a bit. And we'll add another layer to her patch, another layer of pink. And yeah, step away for a little bit. All right, so not everything is dry. The yellow up there in that bubble is still wet. But we're gonna go ahead and move forward, especially so we can work on cute little Luna. 
And we're going to start with a blue-gray, since she's a black cat. I like building up my tones. And I don't think you guys probably know this about me, but my first cat was a black oriental rescue named Midnight. Although, at the time I hadn't seen Sailor Moon, I probably, I was a huge dork, I probably would have named her Luna if I'd seen Sailor Moon. I was actually kind of a late convert, convert to that show. Um, I got into it when it was on its second run in Tsunami. I think that's when a lot of you guys probably got into it as well, though. And I'm going to go ahead and start doing a second coat. In many of my watercolor videos, and possibly my marker videos too, I talk about starting light and building up developing color. And how that's particularly important with darker tones. And Pancake in my comic, 7 Inch Kara, which is a watercolor comic, um, is a black cat as well, so I have a lot of practice building up nice gradations into a black. Because, especially with, say, fur, black isn't truly black. It is, it, optically, there's a lot of highlights. Go in now with an actual, actual black. And we're going to blend this out with that blue-gray. Building up color. And it really helps to have a steady hand and not be chit chatting when you do this. Helps me at least. And working wet into wet, I can blend my colors much more easily. I'm gonna fix her head a little bit because it's starting to look a little misshapen and that's not a cute look all right look how cute she looks I'm going to let that dry actually a lot I'm gonna pull some of this color from her cheek just a little bit over nice I turned out well I wasn't gonna tell you guys but I was a little nervous about it a little on edge but she looks cute Cute, cute Luna. Okay, so I really want to work on that jacket. Unfortunately, I just put a lot of liquid into the paper with Luna. So I'm going to let that dry and then I'm going to come back and work on her jacket. All right, so Luna has had a chance to dry. We're going to go into her jacket now, into Usagi's jacket now with blue gray. And we're going to blend out where relevant with that lighter blue. And I find that blending out color to color on a watercolor paper like this really gives me the sort of look I want as opposed to um, blending with water. Because honestly, like I said earlier, if I really just wanted to do watercolor like look alike, I would just use watercolor. I mean, if this is all you've got and you're trying to replicate watercolor, I can understand that. But if you have a water, a nice watercolor set, there's really no point in, you know, making this into something it's not. I'm bring some of that down into her collar. And while this is wet, I'm gonna go in, add some of that in there to imply shadow, blend it out, darken that as well. the same over here and then go back in so this is actually less denim colored than I would have wanted but I don't actually have a good denim color so we're gonna make the best of it add another layer here so now it's a little edgier than I really wanted I wanted like a nice um, denim blue and maybe I could have gotten that if I'd used this um, but I feel like our order of operations is not in my favor in that and then let's see 
So I want, I'm going to apply some of the blue gray to my ink Inkstentials craft mat. I'm going to pick some of that up with that mauve color. It's not really mauve, shadow mauve. And do a little tip to tip blending, just like you could with your alcohol markers. You can use this technique with your markers, alcohol markers, sorry. And then if you have a piece of scrap paper, you can't see me, but I did that off camera, just scrub it on your piece of scrap paper to remove the excess ink. You don't want it to affect later applications. Because I don't know about you guys, but I'll forget that I, um, that I did that. And then I'll be like, why is my color so terrible and inconsistent? That's why. All right. So we are kind of, I feel like we're finally at the stage where we can use a direct application. Of course, I want those to dry. So I am going to step away, give that a chance to dry and then come back. All right, guys, so everything is nice and dry. We're gonna go ahead and start working directly with bright yellow. And this is pretty much the only yellow I have. So I need to make it count. And see, it's a little bit orange for Usagi's hair. So we're going to do a little bit of blending, not too much, because we don't really want to lose the nice sharp let me actually zoom in for you guys, but we don't want to really lose that sharp delineation. And we can also always go back over and adjust that. So you see, it's actually a lot darker than her hair would normally be. So I'm going to pull sort of away from that now, try to leave the front of her hair lighter. Like I said, we can always go back in and tighten things. And I'm really loving how this turns out. So I think I'm going to offer the original for sale. And I'm going to definitely have her available for purchase at At Home Con later this month. Um, aiming for July 21st, so hopefully this will be edited by then. And at home con, uh, so I didn't, um, one of my favorite cons is first come first serve. It's for sure in seven years, I haven't made it into MechaCon. So, you know, that's a lot of lost income for me and I've spent a lot of time developing an audience there. So I thought I would try to maybe recoup some of the losses there by hosting a con in my living room. And we'll see how that goes and I hope you guys will check it out. It's going to be open to everyone and I'm either going to stream it here or um, probably maybe on Ustream because it allows me to do dual streaming um, and that way I can have a camera behind my table so people can see me working on commissions which is a big deal and a, a, a camera in front of the table so people can see um, you know my setup and what's for sale and I don't expect to make bonkers money of course but it would be really nice if I could sort of um, recoup that lost income. Because normally at MechaCon I make like 1500 So it's it's rough that I'm going to make no money now on that. So um, if you've ever wanted to commission me, if you love my art and you you know, you're probably never going to see me at a con, or even if you think you're going to see me at a con, or even if you're kind of bummed because I won't be at MechaCon and you were counting on that, please do come hang out with me at At Home Con. Uh, hopefully, it'll be fun. And you can do it in your pajamas if you want. There's, Or you can cosplay. That would be kind of fun if people sent me pictures of their cosplays. Um, you know, never done it before, so I'm just trying to make the best of um, a sad situation. And we'll see. And I'm going to have a formal announcement for At Home Con coming up on the channel as, where, as well as, you know, information on where it's going to be. And I'm going to be selling original art. I'm going to be doing commissions. And um, when I'm not working on commissions that were placed during that, I'm going to be working on commissions from um, Free Comic Book Day and A2 Caps, so some of the other commissions I've taken. So, um, you know, 
even if you don't have money to spend, you're still totally welcome and encouraged to come hang out, come chat, watch me draw, watch me sketch. And we'll see how that goes. If it goes well, I have some other artist friends and maybe we can do a bigger at home con at another point in the year. Let's see, online commissions were never a big seller for me. There've been so many times where I opened them up and no one took me on it. And yet I'll be completely swamped at a lot of the shows I do. Just like not even time to go to the bathroom because I have so many commissions. So I'm kind of hoping that by staging this like a convention, you know, get some commissions, get some bills paid, that sort of thing. It's rough when most of your income is convention reliant and you lose a show or you have a string of bad shows. This year has just been sort of a mess uh, regarding conventions. Every, all my conventions have made less money than they usually do. And yeah, I don't want to just like complain about that. So I'm not going to, but it would also be just like a huge help if you guys showed me some love, maybe took that as an opportunity to purchase a commission or to buy a copy of Kara, because I'm going to set my whole con table up. So everything that I offer at cons will be for sale during at home con. All right. Sagi is coming along really, really cute. I'm going to do a direct application here in her hair on her little side floofs. And then we're going to let this dry because I want to go in and do some more details with that. But I am really excited with how she's coming out. She is super cute. I may offer an original and a mini print of her. Mini print would probably not be available at, during at home con because it just wouldn't be printed yet. I'm tightening things up, adding some details. I'm going to go back into Luna's eyes. Um, also, um, I know a lot of you watching this are not necessarily, so I'm going to go in with this English lavender and just sort of do a shadow on Moon Babe. turning out super cute. I'm excited about how cute this is. I would keep it for myself, but unfortunately I do need the money. Blend that out a little bit. That's in there. Soften some of that up. And then I'm also going to do the same on the roses. I'm going to step away and let that dry. All right, so we are almost finished with this. I'm going to obviously tighten up some details. So now I have an interesting conundrum. Um, I really want to tighten up her eyes and I could do that with yellow, but I feel like, I just feel like it would get lost, you know? It also might look pretty weird, but it would also look more realistic. So I'm sort of tempted to do it. Uh, you know what? I'll try it with yellow and maybe I'll live to regret it. Actually kind of working. Almost done. All right, and then I need to do something with Moon Babe down here. And I was sort of thinking I would do it with this dark color. And then go in darken it up down here by going over it again. All right. Let's see. I 
don't really want to kind of like darken up some areas of these roses, but I don't know that it's going to get any darker than that, unfortunately. And honestly, they pretty much look fine as they are. I should be okay with it, but you know how it is. You want to nitpick. And then, finally, I want to grab a white Signo and add a few little details here and there. What's neat about Signos is they are water-based, so they'll reactivate the color. And that gives it a little bit of a cast. As you can see, it's already doing that with Luna's eyes. It's hard to go back over it in case you want to darken it. And also a little in her hair. And a little bit here. Although that wouldn't really happen. Just trying to get things to pop a bit. And I love doing sparkles in the eyelashes. I just think it's really cute. I don't know guys, what do you think? You think I'm done? Or you think I should keep noodling with it? I think I am just about done. So I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. I hope you found it helpful. I hope you found it useful. I hope you found it inspiring. Um, if you enjoy this sort of content, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. I update at least twice a week, every week, often more. And don't forget to head on over to natosoup.blogspot.com where I have years and years of tutorials and reviews designed to get you drawing, to get you painting, to get you making comics. If you enjoy this sort of content, let me know in the comments below. Don't forget to leave a thumbs up and consider heading on over to my Patreon and joining the Art Nerd community. My Art Nerds get early access and exclusive videos to content just like this. So thank you guys so much for watching. I hope to see you really soon. Bye!